So Helen, you've worked for many years in expanding and challenging the concepts of recovery-oriented practice in service delivery. Where do you place yourself around the term recovery? Um, that's a really interesting question, a good question, a hard one to kick off with. For me, this concept of recovery is, is a, the term recovery is different from the concept. And the term is something that I think I and many other people, both here and around the world, are well and truly over. And I think we've really got to kind of get in bed with the concept without necessarily being married to the term. Because the term is something that turns people off. Um, it's, it's a term that um, gives people permission to do to others because it aligns itself with a, a medical understanding of the word recovery. We will fix you, we will cure you, we will you know, get rid of your symptoms. It doesn't speak directly to what people with a lived expertise around the world are saying what's important. Um, so in more recent times, well, when I first started getting involved with services, I was trying to use this language recovery and it used to just get me up against a, a brick wall and, and kind of get all this, you know, but people with mental illness can't recover and all these myths that would come out about it and we do recovery and, you know, and, and I thought, hey, there's got to be a different way of communicating this. So attempting to not use the word recovery allows for a greater unpacking of this term that brings us all onto the same page. Um, and I think that's important. It's a struggle that we all have to do. It's a struggle that to keep thinking about what, is this, what does this mean um, in terms of my own life and, the, and life of others and the life of services, rather than just saying we're recovery oriented. For me, it's a red herring that when I see a service that names itself recovery, or it's workers recovery, or it's program recovery, it's usually a hint that it's not. Um, because it tells me they've not struggled. Because if services are really struggling with this in a way that is true to what this is about, it's not just simply the naming of it. It's probably actually the unnaming of it. Um, and coming back to just good practice or good service delivery that's responsive to helping a person reclaim their life back beyond illness, back beyond disability, back beyond stuckness, back to citizenship. And I think we, we give ourselves permission when we name what we do as recovery as, as a full stop, done that, dusted, move on. And I'm hearing lots of places around the world where, where people are now saying, services are now saying, we've done recovery, we're moving on to something better. I'm going, what, what would that look like? I actually don't know what that means. Um, and so to not use it in, that, in, in the shorthand version for me is really, really important. And I try now to get curious when people ask the word recovery, say, oh yeah, we do recovery or we're recovery oriented. Instead of challenging that directly, I'm much more curious about what does that look like? How do people experience that? I'm mindful of um, the conversation I had with some United Kingdom um, consultants and administrators, and this is going back a number of years ago, I, um, probably back to 2002, and um, I was asked to write their discussion papers on recovery oriented practice. And from, coming from the Antipodes, that was something that I thought, oh, better, you know, better spend some time really kind of hearing what people had to say about it already. And I was struck by this conversation I had in London with some senior administrators and some senior consultants. And they said to me, great enthusiasm, they said, oh, Helen, um, we've got rehab and recovery teams. And I started to panic. I said, oh my God, what they're already doing? What have I got to offer them? I've got nothing to offer them. And, and I thought, no, no, pause, breathe. And I just asked another question. I said, well, can you help me understand what these rehab and recovery teams do that's different from a team that doesn't call itself rehab and recovery? Um, what, how does someone experience it differently? What, what are the outcomes that are different? What are the processes that are different? What are the policies that are different? What are the practices that are different from our traditional way of, of supporting people with a mental illness? And these guys are looking at me as if I was from Alpha Centauri. Like, what is she on? What's she asking these questions about? And then one person cottoned on. And they said to me, oh, Helen, no, 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 you got it all wrong. These, these teams are for the chronics, the ones that aren't going to get better. <laughs> and I looked at this guy and I said, so we've just changed the name, but nothing else has changed in how we go about thinking about our relationship and our positioning and our, our support to people 
And they looked at each other and said, yeah, that's probably what we've done. So this is, where, this is the red warning. This is the warning warning Bill Robinson for me, is that when I see the naming of this, I've got to get more curious about it. And how has it come to be named this way? And how would someone coming to this service for the first time experience it? 